Hello Floss Tube, Stacy here, and this is Season 7, Episode 7. It's been a little while since I have recorded a Floss Tube video. I have, however, posted a couple of videos that have nothing to do with cross stitch. Um, anyhow, you are catching me on a trial. This is the first sip of a boba tea kit. This is, uh, I guess, brown sugar and cinnamon or something. Boba tea kit. And, um, oh, it's also a new glass. Look what came off the bottom when I picked it up. The sticker. Oh, oh it's coming apart. It's wet. Gross. Okay, anyway, we'll see. Not bad. Not bad. I took my glasses off because look. Ooh, the ring light. <laughs> Here we go. I have tons of things to show because it's been a few months. So, first thing I'm gonna show is a haul. Sorry, had to stop the video to go see what the dog stole off of the bottom shelf in the craft room, but it was nothing that he shouldn't have, so we're good to go. Okay, Shari and I went to the local needlework shop, Sassy Jacks, and it is in uh, the most northern part of Asheville, almost Weaverville, North Carolina. There I got uh, two patterns and ta -da! a pair of sewing scissors or thread cutting scissors but look how stinking pointy those are and they are really sharp uh yeah okay so for those of you wondering it fell onto my desk and not onto the dog so he's safe look how pointy look how sharp and you can take these on an airplane. Just saying. That's what I've heard. All right. So, uh, I also got two patterns. I got this pattern, which is um, two different songbirds. It's by Counting Puddles. And I just really liked the colors in it. I liked the music notes. Um, there's a lot of things that I like about this. There is quite a bit of backstitch on these patterns, but that's okay. Um, so I will look forward to doing those. As well as, y'all know me, I got the Mirabilia, uh, hold on, let me take it out of the plastic. Okay, Mirabilia, Princess Eliana. Um, sorry, trying to see if it'll do a different little bit of coloring, but it doesn't look like it's going to. Anyways, something interesting about this pattern, which is really popular right now because it's pretty new. Um, is that it uses all of the new DMC, which are not really new anymore, they're old. <laughs> but it uses all of the new colors of DMC, which is uh, numbers 1 through 35, which are all very pretty colors. And when Shari went to another cross-stitch store, with her cross-stitchy friends, 
she got me almost all of the beads that go with Princess Eliana she found for me um, all but I think two she found for me I'll be looking for some fabric to put that on and I might already have something that works I don't know we'll see I have so many things to stitch on for Mirabilia or Nora Corbett, either one. Um, this might be on the back burner for a while. <clears throat> and that is all the haul that I have. I do have some Happy Mail. I'm calling this one Happy Mail because it actually came in the mail. So for this pattern here, the 324, which uses 324 colors, a different color for every little thing that you see on there. Uh, Serenity got me a floss organizer that goes specifically for 324 and you can see at the top it's wood and you can see at the top there it has um, sorry at the bottom it says row one and then it has the five by five stitch square and then the motif square motif square motif and you just put your colors in there and then flip side row two same thing and I thought that that was a cool, cool little gift to get in the mail. Thank you so much for getting this for me. I have loaded it up. Here again is the picture. Here is what it looks like the last time that you saw it. And this is what it looks like now. So I have finished another uh, row. I'm doing like a pinwheel. So that way I'm not row, 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 row. Your boat. I'm doing a pinwheel of um, motif. And then the next uh, stitching that I do on it will be the squares that go here, here, here. And I'm kind of doing it like that from the center that's what that looks like now I do have a stat to put below on this I'll put that below I, I did do April whip go but both of those resulted in a finish so I'll put that at the end uh, as far as May whip go goes here's the whip this ring light, I've got to get used to it. Sorry. Here is the Whipgo board that I created for myself. And May Whipgo consisted of six hours on the winter scene stocking and 10 hours on the petal fairy. And then I did June, which was 500 stitches on Heart and Soul, but I'm not going to show that one um, because it's not enough progress. 500 stitches is not much. Um, and then uh, six hours on the World Tree. Paper straws. But whatever. I say that because wet paper, wet napkins, wet Kleenex, wet straw wrappers are disgusting. So a lot of times I'll drink my drink faster if there's a paper straw just because I don't want it to get all nasty. I'm weirdo. I know. 
six hours of work on winter scene stocking. Now, for my whip go, I'll do the six hours or 10 hours or whatever it's asking for. And then usually I'll keep working on that same whip until I get to a stopping point that makes it easy for me to be able to complete a section and count stitches, etc. The winter scene stocking is the one in the center here. That is the one that I'm working on. Last time that you saw this, it looked like this. Now, it looks like this. So I did some, here we go. I, I did some of the work right in here, and then I did these three trees. Uh, the stats are below. This is on 14 count Ada because that's what it calls for in order to have a decent sized stocking. Like this should be a, a normal sized stocking once it's all done. And I hope to have it done before December so that way I can put this up on the mantle with the one that I finished last year which was the Oh Holy Night stocking. I can't even estimate really how many whips I have right now because it's been a long while since I have counted and I finished a few things, but I've also started a couple things. So I don't really know, but usually my average where I run around is about 20 whips. I know, right? 20 whips. Ooh. Next. Also a whip and also a Mirabilia, the Petal Fairy. And last time you saw this, it looked like this. Now it looks like this and let me pull up that thread. And what I worked on for Whip Go was the petals coming out here, the yellow. And then um, after my 10 hours was done, I completed this petal here and counted my stitches. Now you can kind of see more of how she is standing on the flower stem there. Um, I did add a blending filament, a yellow blending filament by Krynik to the lighter portion of the petals there. That was not called for, for from the pattern, but um, I decided that it needed a little bit of sparkle. Doesn't everybody need some sparkle in their life? Even boys. I think maybe after another um, time working on that for the whip go, the 10 hours plus however much I need to do to finish, um, I'll have the whole skirt of the Petal Fairy finished, I believe. So June whip go called for six hours of work on the world tree. This is what it's supposed to look like. So the picture of the full pattern is here and then they blew it up and put it behind there. Don't ask me why they didn't just put the whole thing right here. That would have been nice, but no. Um, so for that, the last time that you saw it, It is on a light green Ada fabric. And I have lots of threads that are parked. I apologize. I think it'll be okay. Now it looks like this. 
Basically what I did was the whole lower portion of the circular tree. This one I really like because it's different, you know. Um, it has a lot of half stitches, which is totally fine with me. I mean, I've done needlepoint before, and that's basically similar to cross stitch, but there's no crosses. It's all half stitches, basically. Um, but this one also was a kit, and it came with some threads that aren't as cottony. Is that even a word? As, um... As DMC is so I, I I really like this kind of thread whatever it is um, it doesn't fall apart or string out I don't know fray um, would be another example but it doesn't do that hardly at all except maybe on the ends that are you know gonna be tucked in the back anyway but it's a really nice thread and uh, I really like it. This stuff is so good. I don't know why Shara gave me this to me. I think she started a problem. I might be addicted. I have three finishes. One of them is the Hands-On Design Botanical Bee that Shari did for her uh, birthday stitch along. So when her birthday came around at the end of May, uh, she had a completed Botanical Bee and this is mine. Oh, sorry. I didn't finish finish it, you know, but uh, cause that's just not my, my big thing. But here it is. This is the hands-on design botanical bee. And uh, basically I did a couple of changes in this. Uh, first of all, I did not use the the uh, suggested fabric for it. What I used is a 32 count Sea Lily Linen by uh, Wichelt. And a couple of changes that I did, I changed the brown color in it just to be one shade darker. And I changed um, some of the back stitching to be black instead of gray so that way you could see it better. I also did a little bit of, see on the bee's body there, the flowers at the bottom were very small. And I did some um, white stamens on those flowers, even though the, the pattern did not call for it. But I really like this fabric color choice to go along with the botanical bee. I think it shows up pretty well on there and it goes along with the um, kind of springy, summery theme. This, I'm looking at the video there, this is more like the color that it is. You know, when I get up here, it looks a lot more green. But when I, I'm back here, it is more of a dark sage type of green color. Of course, I have stats on that. Of course. Next, I, both of these are for the April Whip Go, which actually allowed me to finish these. The first one I'm going to show you is called Bonfire by Sweet Annette. It is a wood canvas that you purchase from on Etsy from Sweet Annette along with your uh, patterns. So the patterns all fit on this same uh, dimensions of the grid 
and you can buy multiple patterns that all go on to this wooden stamp as well as there's like a wooden tag there's a notebook cover there's one that looks like a postcard um, a bunch of different canvases all that will go with these small patterns if you go on to etsy to sweet annette you'll see what i mean and they are really fun and a lot of them are very colorful which i like um, but they do have a good bit of back stitching and stuff which is okay again um but anyway this one i think is really cute and great for summer with the s'mores and the fire there makes me think of camping <laughs> If you want to see the back, there it is. I do, she also, along with the wooden, um, she'll send you a cover so you can glue that on the back and you won't have your stitches um, exposed. But I haven't put it on this one quite yet and so therefore you can see the back. I'm not ashamed of my backs, <laughs> backside. I'm not ashamed of my backside in more ways than one. And last but certainly not least, the Soda Stitch Aladdin's Wonderful Lamp. A finish on this one was called for in April on the Whipco. Um, the last time that you saw this, it looked like this and now it is complete favorite things on this one is the genie's mustache super cute um i did make some changes on this as most of the soda stitches that i have done i have made a few color changes Mostly because the pattern calls for very, very light pastels and I feel like you aren't able to see it very much on white uh, linen. So I make them just a tiny bit darker so that you can see them. Uh, they pop out more, a little bit better there. Um, Princess Jasmine via Disney is one of my favorite princesses. I'm not huge on princesses in general anyway. I like villains, I like, you know, the random little kid heroes and all of that kind of stuff on Disney, but Princess Jasmine is one of my favorites. I was her, I think, twice for Halloween. <laughs> anyway, super cute. And these, as you know from watching all of my videos, uh, these are on, the, like there will be another square up here on the same piece of fabric and another square down here on the same piece of fabric. And I have another one that is all complete just like this. So whenever this entire piece of fabric is finished, then I will have six total. Yeah. What I have left to do is Alice in Wonderland and Beauty and the Beast. Both of those finishes are on my whip go board. So I'm going to just wait until those numbers are called and finish those as those numbers are called from the whip go board. I just wanted to show real quick. I have made this little graph of kind of um, like a bullet journal would be or something, but I made columns of each month with the days in the month, and I decided that I was going to color in the days that I did cross stitch work. Uh, so you can see, like in May, I did... Um, Maybe half of the days in May, I'd, I'd worked on some cross stitch. Uh, I didn't do as much in June because I had a vacation last week. And that vacation, I uh, went to, Daniel and I, we went to Boston and Salem, Massachusetts. And then we went for a day 
up to Kennebunkport, Maine, and that was a very fun vacation, a lot of walking, um, a lot of history up there. I'll show a couple of pictures of the trip in order to close out this video. Thank you so much for watching me and I hope that you enjoy all of these videos. If you do, then please ring the bell and subscribe to my channel, which the bell is right below there, and that means that whenever um, I post a video, you will be notified by YouTube that I have posted a video. So, Hopefully it will not be as long of a time between floss two videos as this one was, but thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.